Hello friends and potential friends. If you've watched any of my recent garden videos, you may have gotten a glimpse of some a little bit of a mango seed uh, experiment that I've got going on. But something I had mentioned before is what did I do with the rest of the mangoes? be honest with you, when I brought those mangoes home from the grocery store, all I was really interested in was the seeds. So I sliced them up and I put all of the good stuff in a freezer bag and stuck it in a freezer. Now it's time to do something about it. I've waited this long because I was waiting for some habanero peppers to ripen. As it turned out, I only got three and that's just not quite enough for the spiciness that I like in my jellies. So I wound up going back to the grocery store. I picked up a few more habaneros and they also had more mangoes that looked real good. So I bought a few more mangoes. And now I'm going to try my hand at putting out some uh, mango habanero jelly or jam with just a little bit of a twist. So I found something else in the freezer I decided I wanted to get rid of too. So let me take you off the tripod for a minute and I'll show you the current state of the kitchen and then I'll give you a break while I get everything prepared. So currently in the kitchen I've got my ball book. There's the mangoes that I bought recently and the habaneros that I bought recently. I've got a dozen half pint jars back there. Got my scale out here. Big bowl to work in and the mangoes that I took out of the freezer. And there's the twist. I found a bag of strawberries in the freezer too. There's some pectin in there somewhere. And if that's not enough habaneros, I've got those three that I picked out of the garden, along with various other goodies. So basically, the recipe I'm following calls for mango raspberry jam. Three pounds of mangoes, it says about four to five medium. I couldn't find any medium. So I got large. I think I'm going to wind up doing a double batch here. One and a half cups of crushed red raspberries, which I don't have any of. I'll be putting strawberries in in place of them. Two tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh or bottled. Six tablespoons of classic pectin. And five and a half cups of sugar. Well, let me get slicing and dicing and peeling and chopping and see what I wind up with here. And then we'll try to put it together into something that I can turn into jelly. Okay, I've got the mangoes and the strawberries and the habaneros mixed up in my saucepan here. The uh, mangoes that I had in the bag was about two and a half pounds, so I added couple more, three more of those mangoes that I got the other day. That's going to give me around four pounds total. Now I'm supposed to add five cups of sugar according to the recipe. There's one, two, three, As you can tell, I don't use this sugar very much. It's turned into a block inside my canister. In fact, the only time I use sugar anymore, there's four. When I'm making jelly, pretty much. Well, I do have one bread recipe that I put a little bit of sugar in. That's five. It says five and a half. I'll go ahead and add the other half, but keeping in mind that I've actually got more than closer to four pounds of mangoes there instead of the three that it calls for. And I have my jars in the water bath canner over here coming up to a boil. When I'm doing water bath I always tend to boil my jars good to sterilize them. This water bath doesn't get quite as hot as a pressure canner does. Of course, most of the time I boil the jars before I put them in the pressure canner, too. Better safe than sorry. Well, if nothing else, that's going to make a pretty jelly. And 
and I'm starting to heat it up. Go back to the recipe again. Got everything in there. Cook, combine the mangoes, raspberries, oh, I forgot the lemon juice, and pectin in a large saucepan. Stirring to blend in pectin. Bring mixture to a boil over medium high heat. Add sugar, stirring until sugar dissolves. So I messed that one up. So it's not medium high. Actually, it was on medium high. I just hadn't brought it to a boil yet. So I'm going to bring it to a boil before I put the pectin in and see what happens there. And once I get it boiling, I need to get it to a boil that can't be stirred down. Once I get to that point, I have to boil it hard for one minute, stirring constantly, remove it from the heat, skim off any foam that's necessary, and then put it in the jars. Whew. Needless to say, I'm already dripping, but hey, surprise, surprise, we actually had a cold front move through last night. It's only about 86 degrees here now. Anyway, I'm going to bring that up to a boil. Once I get it boiling, I'm going to put in six tablespoons of pectin, and then I'm going to bring it up to a hard boil. So, you don't need to watch all of that, but I'll bring you back when there's something interesting going on. Okay, the jam mixture is starting to get hot. I've got to keep stirring it to make sure it doesn't scorch with all that sugar in it. It is well incorporated. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and add in my six tablespoons of pectin. And get that stirred in good. Then we just wait for it to come to a full boil. Okay, we're getting to that boil stage that I can't stir down, so I'll start the timer. One minute. Keep stirring. Constantly. Ouch. Need a longer spoon. start pulling jars. Okay, that's all my jars. Let's see if you can see any of this. I'll try to stay out of the way. up all 12. I'm shooting for about half an inch of head space. A little more on some, a little less on others. Now you know the drill. Got a little 
little bit of vinegar here. Carefully go around the rims. Add a flat. Ouch. Finger tight. Drop my paper towel. It's okay, got plenty of them. Back into the water bath counter. Got 12 half pints. Now, for those of you that are screaming at me right now saying I didn't see bubble, uh, I think it's pretty clear that uh, as liquidy as this stuff is, there's not any place in there for air bubbles to be getting lodged. So I purposely skipped that step. Just wanted to see if anybody caught it. And now down into the water. Sure, there's at least an inch over top of the jars. It's actually quite a bit more than an inch. And started up the boiling. Okay, we're starting to get a good boil going. Just a little bit farther. That's looking pretty solid, so we will put the lid on and start the timer for 10 minutes. Now you don't have to sit there and look at my rusty lid. I'll bring you back when the timer's about ready to go off. Okay, that's 10 minutes. Turn the heat off. Uncover the timer. And I'm gonna pull the piece up out of the water. And pull them out of the canner. Looks pretty. Oop, already getting some pings. And there we have 12 half pints of mango strawberry habanero jam. Ping! And I've also got three quarters of a pint that I scraped out of the pan. I'll be putting that in the refrigerator and enjoying that soon. They'll be sitting out here overnight and in the morning, ping! I'll check for seals, label them up, and add them to the pantry. Now I gotta go feed some kitties. They're probably sitting out there waiting on me because I'm a little bit late. So I better get going and get that done. And I'll see you next time.